A lot of times people think that when you build a home theater, it's got to be expensive and you're going to have to hire somebody to build it for you. Today in this video, I'm going to share with you an incredible home theater. We're going to do a complete tour of this 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos system. And I'm here with my friend Ike. Ike has been an incredible friend over the past couple of years. We're up here for Cedia 2022, but I thought while we're here, let's go check out your home theater since you're in the Dallas area. Ike, thanks so much for inviting us into your beautiful home, brother. Thank you, youth man. It's been almost like a lifelong dream, yeah. you know? Welcome to Dallas, welcome to Texas, and glad to have you in the house. Yeah, man, so we're gonna have some fun in this home theater because Ike, you've done all the work yourself. Mm -hmm. This is a great space. We're gonna look at all your equipment. We're gonna talk about all your DIY projects here in this theater room. And I think this is gonna be really, really practical home theater tour, and you guys are gonna get some great inspiration. So I, let's go ahead and begin with the space as far as the size of your room. Yes, so the room is about 18 by 20. Technically it should be 20, but based on you know some limitations that we have on the other side of the room, it's about 18 foot and it's about eight foot tall yeah. on one side and towards the front, it goes up to about nine foot. So that's about the room. You know, Super it's cool. 18 by 20. You've got a big space to work with, and so that allows you some great flexibility on subwoofer placement, which we'll talk about in a little bit, as well as seating and some really, really cool features I can't wait to share with you guys. So up at the front, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your screen size and your projector. Yeah, so I went with the Simor Center Stage XD. It's a 137.7 .7 diagonal screen. It's okay acoustically transparent screen. It was in, there's a funny story behind it. I actually went on the website and I was trying to buy a different size, a smaller size that I thought would be good for the room. Yeah. And then I saw the 137, I put it in the cart and somehow I was playing around with it and clicked order. <laughs> and it went through and I panicked and I called my wife and of course she didn't believe the story because right. she was like, nah, I'm sure you paid for that. Sure. But you know, she was like, okay, just go ahead. You already paid for it. So that's how I ended up with the 137. So awesome. it's a good screen, but I love it. Yeah, love so it. Seymour, same screen I've got at my, yes. my home theater. Absolutely love it. And we're talking about acoustically transparent. We'll talk about that, the speakers that are behind in a second, mm -hmm. but what projector do you have paired with the screen? So I went with the Sony 325 ES native 4K. You know, I looked at the JVCs and, you know, everyone wants the JVC with the black levels, sure. but, you know, it was obviously out of my budget. So I found a really good deal on Crutchfield. You know, it was used. So, you know, I, I thought it was a good option, you know, with native 4K. And I figured, yeah, I'll get it. And so far, so good. It's been, I've really enjoyed it. Well, it's got a beautiful image. And the great thing is you're able to save some money. Yes. And again, you've got to figure out what works for your budget and what, in your constraints. And so maybe you can't go up to you know a massive uh, NZ9, which is $25,000, but there's some great affordable options out there, especially when you can buy it used or even open box yeah. um, so forth. So we've got a 137 inch Sony native 4K projector, beautiful image. Let's talk a little bit about your speakers. What do you have going on behind the screen? Behind the screen, I have identical monoprice in walls. I think they're the IW365. THX speakers, and that's what I have for my entire bed layer, which is something that I think is really good. They are budget friendly. I wouldn't say that they're expensive speakers. I think I got them on the deal for about three hundred and twenty dollars mm -hmm. each. Yeah, you know, it was my first experience going with in-wall speakers, so I had a lot of doubts. But you know, just with settling in and testing them out, you know, I've come to love it. You know, and. I love them and I haven't even done any type of calibration with, when it comes to the sound and sure. audio for it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to enjoying it. So one thing I forgot to mention is that this is gonna be super practical also because there's a lot of your home theater. You've been building this for about six months and so a lot of it's still kind of unfinished. And so we wanted to let you see kind of that work in progress. And I've always been an advocate of people enjoying their journey. And because we all kind of never really arrive at a finished final journey, it's a process. And so when we walk through this home theater, you're going to see some things that are unfinished. But I love that fact that you're in the process of building this. But we're going to talk about each one of those aspects. So having that identical, so you got seven bed layer speakers, yes. three up front, two side surrounds, and then two surround backs. It gives you just this really seamless sound 
um, when it's going from individual speaker to individual speaker, you don't hear any changes of pitch, you don't hear any changes of like timbre. Um, so that, when you can do that, that's phenomenal. And so you were able to accomplish that here in this home theater. Yeah. So we got seven bed layer, and then what do we have going on up top? So up top I have four OSD eight inch um, Atmos speakers. You know, when I initially picked up the in walls for the monoprice, I couldn't get what was within my budget for a monoprice because that's what I was aiming for. Okay. But the, the OSDs are really good. So I, I, I like them for the eight inch, they're pretty solid and they haven't failed me yet, so that's good. Sure, so you've got four Dolby Atmos speakers yep. down firing um, into your room. And then what do we have going on for subwoofers? Because I love bass and you've got some pretty good tactile bass in this room, what yes. do you have? So I have the PV2000 Pros. Um, I have one in front and one the other end of the room, but you know, that's what I have for now. And I had them in an older setup prior to moving into this place. and. I initially thought that, you know, I would be so eager to go get other, maybe another two to add to the room, sure. but these two have worked really good. So, yeah. you know, I can't wait to, you know, get them properly calibrated and see how well they play out. Yeah, we've even talked about some things like the mini DSP can help yes. you dial in those uh, for your time alignment as well as EQing those. And so the good thing is this is a great framework. This is a good starting point. And then what, by the time you begin to dial it in and calibrate it properly, maybe get the mini DSP, yes. you may find you don't need any more additional subwoofers here. Yeah. Then again, you may be like youth man and go, oh man, we need more. Let's just keep going. Yeah. And it's a deep rabbit hole from there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm already down in the rabbit hole. So, I mean, I'll keep going lower until I can find <laughs> whatever is out there. But yeah. So I, one important aspect of every home theater is acoustic treatment. Now you've got a big room and originally it was a lot of hard surfaces. So kind of walk us through what you've done to this room to treat it acoustically. Okay, so with regards to acoustic treatment, I'll probably just start you know, with the way the room was when we moved in. It's supposedly a game room. So it had just on this side, there was a half wall and you could basically look down the stairs from here. Sure. And I have a good friend of mine, frankly, basically had to start by building a wall from ground up all the way and just parking it with a lot of insulation. So that helped take care of the wall in itself. You know, over there on the backside too by the rack, there was also a window opening that we had to take down completely seal and then just treat some of the walls the best way that we can. And then obviously I went the DIY routes with, you know, the wall panels and, you know, got some nice, I believe the two by fours two by threes and just, you know, with some rock wool. Mm -hmm. I got this, I think it's a Guilford of Maine material. Right. Very I popular. Found it. Yeah, yeah, it's popular in all the forums. So. And you can get this in any color. You can yes. get a bunch of different fabrics and textures. Yeah, so I was able to get a, a lot of yardage and just go down to the garage and just take some good measurements and just peel them out. So I do have a couple of them. I think there's about seven or six in, around the room. Okay. You know, so yeah, this side, quite simple. You know, on the other side, you know, there were a couple of challenges that we had to, you know, just deal with and come up with something a little different. Sure. So speaking of the other side, let's go ahead and check that out. Okay. So what we have done on this side of the room was a little bit different. And I'll just pull the velvet curtains here. So as you can see, we have two more acoustic panels. So and these were hidden. Yeah. I yes, didn't even know this I was like, back yes, here. Yes. We, we kind of like that. So during the day when, you know, no one is using the room watching the movie, we can just open it. So it, gotcha. it looks a little bit, you know, not just black acoustic panels, but it adds some color to the room when we're not watching movies. So sure. That's kind of it. Besides the fact that Maria von Trapp is my favorite character. That's awesome. The movie I grew up watching, The Sounds of Music. Yeah. So found our way here. So, so I, where did you get this? Because I've seen a lot of guys do this. So where did you buy like the, the printed fabric from? Do you so know? There is a website called My Fabric Design okay. where you can go up there and upload pictures and then, you know, choose the materials that you want. I think it's myfabricdesign.com. Okay. And you can select it and take measurements of what you're trying to, what you're trying to build on sure. and they will print it out and send it to you looking really good. Dude, that looks awesome. I love that. So yeah. you can put your favorite movie posters yes, up there. Yes, your movie posters, pictures family of your posters. Family. Yeah. And I actually got one of the cheapest qualities because mm -hmm. I was actually thinking, you know, just give them a test run, but sure. it came out good. So you could actually get a lot better than 
than, nice. you know, than this looks. Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll link that down in the description if you guys are interested in that. So what else do we have behind this big, really thick curtain Cur here? Yeah. So we have the elephant that we have in the room, and which is usually <laughs> what most people that have home theaters never want to have, yeah. which is basically a window, you know, or two of them. Yeah. You know, so this has always been the challenge that, you know, I thought we would have once we try to put this together. But, you know, we've been kind of able to get it to work. You know, yeah. with the surround bed layers, as you can see, I was able to build a separate box and pack it up with enough insulation that I think, you know, is okay. And put in the in-wall speakers in there and just ran the cables because this is an exterior wall, so sure. I couldn't really get to the attic. Yeah. So I ran the cables. So and you got like kind just, of a track here. Just with a and track and just it. painted it to match the color of the room. Mm -hmm. And you can see I still have tracks that I need to paint just to be able to match because the cable is coming in. So, yeah, but it sounds good. And I think the velvet cottons are kind of help to dampen the sound. And I used some black film in there just to you know, block the sunlight. We left this open because like I said, we want to be able to just sit in here when sure. we're not watching a movie and just allow some sunlight come in. So you got about half of the, the yes. light blocked off. Blocked off, off. yes. Super, and super cool. With and the you curtain, never see, we don't get bleed out. So that's the that's, thing, you never see thing. any of that coming yes. through the room because of the thick curtains. Yes, and when we just go forward, you know, there's just more. I'll I think switch with one, you. Yes, there's one acoustic panel that we have. So we had to use, this is another, just another DIY, you know, fanciful. I put it just right there to be able to just provide some, you know, acoustic support for that back wall in speaker. So yeah, that's what we have on this side. And, you know, right behind the projector on the back side, there's one more, you know, just, I thought of using some kind of, picture frame you know similar to the other ones but i just decided to go with the black so that looks you know that helps with any sound is just going back there off your back wall absolutely yep. so i one area that we can get really creative and a lot of fun with our home theaters is with lighting and you've got some really really cool aspects in your home theater so walk us through the lighting that you've chosen for this room okay so i would say I would start with, I have what, six can lights in the room that we have, and they're all on, I think, separate zones. I have three on the left side and three on the right side, and I wanted to be able to just control them independently. Sure. They're all voice controlled, voice enabled, and they're RGB lights, so right. you can set the mood for whatever, you know, mood that you want in the house. And then, you know, another impressive part of the room, which most people say is the most impressive, I but I think it. it's one of the worst decisions I made for the room <laughs> we'll, was we'll talk about that. fiber optics starlight. Yeah. You know, you watch all these videos on YouTube and you know, you get, oh yeah, you can get starlights and you think, oh yeah, I can just go out there, go into my garage and knock it out in sure. 30 minutes. But yeah, once you start the process, you know, it turned out into almost like my not top 10, yeah. not so top 10. Yeah, that was number one on it. You so know, it sounded but, like this was a lot of frustration. I love the, and, and it's not finished built. Yep. We still have to trim those, uh, the ends, and you may be adding more. Yes. But you have to physically, my understanding, you have to physically cut holes and feed each individual fiber optic cable down yep. and kind of design your own pattern. Is that right? Yes. So from what I had seen was there are two ways that people who use um, almost like a, a board, mm -hmm. you know, that you can drill the hole into and pass the fiber optic cable okay. in. I went with the cotton using a material route, so it was a lot easier for me just to use pins to poke. I got you. So you, you know, had to but, drill through, yes, you just, just poke, poke it. it. But the trick is with material, when you put those fibers, they just pop right back out. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to be able to put it in and try to use a glue. On the back side, maybe? Yes, okay. to just kind of hold it. Yeah, because I initially tried to do it right from you know the top bottom view but it was like a mess because you could see the stains yeah, so gotcha. yeah so i got the fiber with almost 500 fiber strands okay and i probably got to about 200 and i quit <laughs> so there's about 300 of the unused fibers That's right hilarious. there somewhere inside and as you can see it's still yet to be trimmed you know so yeah. i will be putting in some time and some effort to just trim them and get them to look 
much better. So yours is a little bit different because we've got this platform up there. Kind of walk us through why did you choose that and, and what's the purpose of that? So I initially my intent was just to try to, and I will probably still get to it, is to try to put some type of insulation, you know, in there. Maybe not rock wool, but okay. just the, the standard flimsy ones that you can buy of Amazon okay, just to... Gotcha slide them in there and just have them hold. Yeah, like just, you know, just have them there just to provide some type of absorption, okay. you know, for the ceiling. So that was, you know, that was the original intent. And then if you, for whatever reason, you wanted to take that down, it's a little bit easier to do that. Yes, I do have some screws that kind of hold them. They're almost like hooks and uh -huh. you just drill them into the drywall, but basically on the frames and I can just go there and losing the straps and it will definitely come down. So it's an easy, it's easy to bring down, but I, I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon. So I, one big decision that most people have to make in a home theater is do I go with like couches? Do I do with actual theater seating? And so walk us through what you chose and why you chose that. Okay, so I did go with what I already had. You know, we, we, we got this from a local home zone, you know, local furniture store in our sure. neighborhood. And it looked good. We, we kind of liked it. The color blended with what we had. And, you know, they, we were able to get a good deal on them, you know. So we chose to do that. And I've decided to stick with them because they, yeah. they, they work. You know, they do everything. You can sure. recline the headrest and everything. It works really. has some good cup holders that, you know, so we enjoy it. And, you know, there's no rush, you know, to try to replace them, you know, except maybe Valencia decides to send me one, you know. So... But yeah, they're, they're really good and we like them. Super cool, so, and also the rear, we've got those elevators. So tell us a little bit about your riser. Yes, yeah, so this was also a DIY, you know, platform when we decided to go with two rows of seating. Mm -hmm. I figured, yeah, let's try to build something. So this is all two by eights or so, I believe, you know, and it's packed with rock wool insulation. Okay. And where it is, it's probably where it's going to be because yeah. it weighs super, it's super pretty heavy. super heavy, so it's hard to move. So, yeah, I was able to build that up, fill it up and with insulation, and then put the carpet in on it. And yeah, so you and, I were, it. you and I were talking earlier that, you know, it is a pretty high riser. And yes. honestly, I wish I went a little bit higher on my rear riser, mm -hmm. but hindsight is twenty twenty, And so I love the fact that you're up high enough that the front seats don't impede the vision from yes. the back row but it's almost too high. And so I asked if you were going to create like any steps So tell us about that. Yes, so I am working on that, you know, down in the garage, I already have the materials that I will use to build a little step. And that would also give me the opportunity to fix something that I missed out, which was I didn't include in power mm. to it. Because sure. a lot of risers have, you know, it's a lot easier to plug in the seats versus yeah. having to plug them to an adjacent wall. So I think having that, step down will give me that opportunity to fix that. So you can add that into yes. that. Super, super cool. Yes. And I, I see a familiar brand here. We got two boxes from OSD Audio. What are the plans for that? What's inside the box? Yes, so I was able to get a good deal. Thank you, David. Dave from OSD, I believe that's the correct yeah. name. And these are the three channel home theater amplifiers. Um, I have two of them. I have, you know, I'm looking forward to unboxing them, getting them put in the rack and just testing them out and seeing how they go. So, you know, that's that's additional power. So what are you going to utilize these for? I'm assuming maybe three for your front stage, the yes. LCR. And then what are the other three going to power? Yes, yeah, so I would use the front three and I have one other in the rack when we get there, we can talk about that. And obviously one of them will go for the front three and I'll find a good way to, you know, kind of walk the other ones around to fit whatever layouts I Gotcha, have. so this will be a third amplifier. So you already have one yes. in the rack? Yes, I have one in the rack. Well, so. super cool. Before we transition over to the rack, Ike actually has a YouTube channel as well. And we've been looking at your uh, studio setup and I'm super jealous, dude. You've got every aspect of making some incredible videos. And so I know you're, you're kind of shy. You're like, man, I kind of want to do this, but I'm excited for you, brother. I think you've got an incredible heart. I love your passion for home theater. I think you're gonna make an incredible content creator, so keep that up. Well, let's go ahead and walk over to the other side of your room and check out all the equipment in your rack. So, so we kind of talked about, you know, we'll take a look at the, the theater rack and just FYI, it's still under construction. So, you know, 
we'll take a look and see what we have. And, you know, just starting at the very top, we have, you know, just the Logitech control and a bunch of remotes that are just sitting there with the NVIDIA Shield. I think it's the 2019 version. And just below in the second rack, we have the Oppo, thanks to Technodad. I think I won that from one of his giveaways. I know I did, not think, but I did get that for one of his giveaways that he was doing. And just here is a space that I created for one of the three channel amplifiers. I am going to have to do a swap and the reason is because I have the Denon 4700H receiver down here, so I'll probably just have to move it up and then have the three channel amplifiers on this layer and below. And right after that, we have the Panasonic UB820 Blu ray player. Really impressive, but you know, unfortunately, it's probably going to take a backseat now to the Oppo 203 player. And this is just a rack for the extra, and we have an AC Infinity fan, and this is the OSD Nero 5 channel. I think it's the A5180 5 channel amplifier. So this will be running my um, bed ear level speakers, you know, while the front three on the other three channel. And then at the bottom we have the Panamax, you know, power conditioner. I can't remember exactly what the model is, but yeah, that's that's what we have for now, you know, and most of it are, you know, just probably what I'm going to be sticking with for some time, you know, no, no rush for any upgrades just yet. So I, these cabinets can get super, super expensive. I know there are a lot of different brands on the market, but you were able to find a really slick youth man deal. Tell us about that. So this is probably one of the cheapest investments that I made in the home theater, which mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, was a surprise. You know, I was able to get a good deal on a website called Tools Loots. You okay. know, I could provide you with the, the URL. Okay, we'll post and it down. This was a hundred dollars. It actually wow. cost more to ship it. I think I paid about a hundred and fifty eight dollars to ship it from California. Crazy. And it was full freight shipped all the way down to Texas for me and I was surprised. I, was, I wasn't I was sure what to expect, but when I saw it, I was quite impressed. It comes with, you know, the glass door. It actually has a door at the back, but sure. I took that out too just to be able to have access mm -hmm. to the media rack. But yes, they are good deals there. I don't believe you have to spend these. They go for quite yeah, thousands an amount, of thousands of dollars yeah, just to find easily. something like this. So, yeah. You know. Sure. So full rack. I mean, you've got lock. Um, you can add LED lighting yes. in here if you want to on your own. We've got four fans up at the top for ventilation. Yep. Super, super cool. We've got casters on the bottom in case you need to move, move it around. around yes. But definitely. So one thing I hope you guys have seen in this entire home theater is that you can build an incredible home theater and not have to break the bank. You don't have to go out and buy the most expensive speakers, the most expensive rack, and you can still get an incredibly enjoyable experience. Well, guys, if you enjoyed the video, check out some other home theater tours as well as some more content from Cedia 2022. And as always, you guys be blessed and we will catch you in the next video.